Hey, what's up, Philip? Good to see you back, man. Uh, you know, you're in kind of a unique uh, situation here where you come back for one game and you're down for a few games. And I think a lot of times when guys miss time, they say like there was a, an advantage to being on the sideline and, and kind of getting a chance to do the mental reps. Did you feel that this time around for the Dolphins? Definitely. Thank you guys for having me today. Um, definitely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, it was a whirlwind for me. I came in real fast and had to learn on the fly. And, you know, things happen for a reason. And I got to really just sit there and really get to, to observe and, and watch, you know, my teammates and understand the run schemes and uh, just enjoy some, some, some football and understand what they're, what they're looking for. So it was definitely a good learning curve for me. Thanks, Philip. Okay. Um, thank you. Philip, you haven't been here for too long, but um, I wanted to ask you about, about the one day at a time mentality from Brian Flores. Why do you think this is working for this team? Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely working because we're focusing on that one one day, pretty much like today. We just focus on uh, Wednesday practice. You know, now we're going to go into Zoom meetings here later on. We're going to focus on that. We're going to get better. We're going to watch film and we're going to understand what we did wrong and what we did right. And we're going to continue to move forward from there. And uh, th that's the that's the kind of focus and in, in, in the mindset you have to have in this league um, because you can't you can't take days off because every day counts and every day matters leading up into uh, Monday night. So, um, you know, that mentality that that uh, my teammates, you know, show every day, the coaches show every day, it, it's a great mentality. And uh, you're seeing it day in and day out, and you're seeing it on Sundays. So uh, we just got to keep doing that. Hi, Philip. Um, following up on Travis's question, the flip side to being able to sit back and watch and learn while you were sitting, while you were away is that you come here, you were able to play like, couple of days after you get picked up and then now it's been November 28th since your last game and so how, how difficult has that been to deal with and how how antsy are you to get back on the field yeah I'm very antsy I'm very excited you know I, I, I was by here to just uh help the team and that's it, any way I can do it do so you know and you can't help the team by you know sitting there watching but um definitely took a lot out of it um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm very excited to, to be back and do what I'm supposed to do when whatever that is at whatever time and uh, go from there. You know, I just want to I want to help this team win and they deserve the, deserve the wins. The, the Miami fans deserve this. So we need to go out there and we need to execute. If I may follow up, what were you able to do while you were on the COVID list in terms of being able to stay physically ready? Oh, I mean, push-ups, setups, uh, you know, Zoom meetings, uh, mentally, you know, um, it's true. You know, a lot of times, you know, everybody's physically gifted in this league. But a lot of times, I, I would say 90% of it is mentally. Mentally, are you, are you, you know, brought up, brought into it? Are you, are you, you dialed in, dialed up to what's going on, seeing things like that's, you know, very important. I think that, you know, even though you're not physically out there, you mentally got to take a mental, mental sweat, mental, mental, um, you know, fatigue yourself with that so that when it's time for you to go out there, you can execute. Thank you. Philip, obviously COVID-19 affects every person differently. Um, how, how did it affect you? Yeah, honestly, I, I, had, I didn't have any symptoms. You know, I, I um, for me, it was like, you know, everybody in, in the run back room were, were popping uh, uh, positive. So I was like, you know, let me go and make sure I'm okay so I don't bring it in to anybody else. And sure enough, I went in there and I popped uh, positive for it. And I just, I did what the protocol asked me to do. And, you know, I st stuck to it. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm just glad, uh, you know, but I've had family members that actually had to be hospitalized because of this. So, wow. um, you know, I have a son that, you know, is one years old. So I was, uh, you know, it was it was very, very scary just to know that, you know, even though it wasn't nothing was wrong with me, how was going to affect my family? Um, answer this if you want. Obviously, we know you're vaccinated because of the protocols. Um, would, would you recommend folks get vaccinated? Um, were the family members of yours who had problems, were they unvaccinated? Uh, so everybody that that. Um, got it before the vaccinations really started becoming a thing that's yeah. when they were really hospitalized you know i am vaccinated i do think that uh me personally i think it did help me with my symptoms but that's everybody's choice and everybody yeah. you know that's the, they're right you know and um you know I, to me it you know it's just like the the flu shot or anything else like you can't tell somebody to do it i think that it helped me out 
Uh, my fiance is vaccinated, but our one-year-old son is not I mean, because he's so young at that time. So it's one of the things where it's just scary regardless. Hey, thanks, Philip. Good luck on uh, Monday. All right. Thank you, guys. So, uh, I do have a football question, but I wanted to follow up. So you had no symptoms? Yeah. So, I mean, the only thing that I probably had was maybe get fatigued, truly. Um, now, uh, my fiance ended up getting it at the beginning. She was the same as me, and she thought she was tough. And then two days later, she was sitting there. Uh, her muscles were hurting really, really bad. So it just affects people differently. And I, you know, even when I got the shots, you know, people say that you kind of get something. I, I, I thought they gave me a placebo or something because I, I felt felt good. <laughs> My arm didn't hurt anything. So, but uh, I definitely got it. And I definitely think that's one of the reasons why I didn't have significant uh, symptoms. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you for your transparency because I've been asking everybody, not just football players, like yeah. what are their symptoms and what's... Yeah what's COVID like but a football question you are known as an outside zone runner um which I think is 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 a great compliment what does it take to be an effective outside zone runner and, yeah. and a team that can run that outside zone yeah I mean outside zone that that you have to be cohesive with each other like that's one thing I have learned over the times with a lot of my my running back coaches and it, you guys got to mirror up with each other um, one of the best outside zone runners or two would, that I've, I've like watched growing up with one, Jamal Charles and Chris Johnson, hands down, one of the best outside zone runners there is. Uh, and, that, and that's just about pressing. You got to be able to be patient and press and be able to cut on a dime. The faster you can do that and explode, uh, the better off you'll be with that. And that's all about just patience and being able to come zero to 60 like that. And I don't know how many, too many people that can, can do the outside zone like Jamal Charles and Chris Johnson did. So you're talking about chemistry with the line? Yeah, yeah, with the line. Everything has to match up. But you got to help your offensive line by putting them on their blocks, by being patient, by setting it up with your eyes. There's a lot that goes into it that, that you have to slow your mind down. Uh, and then once you kind of get the hang of that, you, you, know, you, you, can, you know, you can get the gist of it. So it takes a minute to get that flow with the offensive line. Yeah, sure. yeah. It, 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 take, it takes a minute to get the flow in anything you do, um, you know, especially, you know, it just all depends on the scheme set and what, what you, you know, the offensive line's better at doing and what, you, what you're good at doing at that time. So it's just about being on the same page. Thank you. I appreciate that. Philip, I have a football question, but first, um, I, I'm glad things turned out okay for you with, with the COVID situation. I can't imagine how that must have been weighing on your mind. Um, were you having to like self-quarantine from yeah. relatives to keep them safe? Yeah, yeah. So I, I stayed downstairs in my basement the, the whole time because uh, um, at the beginning, my, my fiance and my son didn't have it. So it was just me. And she ended up getting it, and you know we kind of had to had no choice uh, but to quarantine, uh, keep our son away from us. And so it was it was one of those times where it's just like, you know, you just see how real this stuff is, and you understand that um, it's serious. You know, it's very it's it's some serious that you know a lot of people are still dying from today. Uh, on the football side, um, I wanted to ask you about. You know, watching the team this past Sunday, the running game really came alive. It was the best running performance this team has had all year. I wanted to get your views on how the running game is starting to come together. And also Duke Johnson putting up 107. You must have been happy to see what Duke was able to do. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Duke, Duke has been in the league for a long time. And actually, me and Duke came from Houston. So we had a lot of Houston stories to tell each other. Um, but Duke has been, like I said, people look at Duke and I think that they see Duke because he can catch the ball well, but they don't get to really see that he really is a, a hard-nosed runner. I mean, think about when he was at the University of Miami, that's what he did best. Um, and, and for us, I think it's just a mentality thing. I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's breaking tackles, it's offensive line moving down, getting on, getting on the, uh, to the secondary. It's about finishing blocks. It's about finishing runs. Uh, that, that over time, you know, you, if you do that enough, 
you can wear a defense down and, you know, you can get that momentum going. And I think that that's what you're seeing with the Jets. And Duke did a, did a hell of a job of doing that, bringing some juice and breaking tackles. And as a running back, you have to be able to do that um, to move the chains. Uh, you got to do that extra effort, man. And, and that, extra, that, that extra effort, that, that's what you see out there. And that's how you get wins. You know, seeing him in this past game, I'm a little perplexed on how the first thing you think of when you think of Duke is not for that determined running, that power running that he does. I, do people underestimate that? You know, I think for 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 people, I don't think people understand how big Duke really is. Like, I think Duke is like what, 210. He's strong. He's patient. Uh, and he can catch. And I think that for 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 people, it's like Duke was hungry. You know, Duke, you know, coming from you know Cleveland and the Houston, he did really well there. And then you know he had he had to sit out for a little while and he get an opportunity to be in his home state. I know how it is to be able to play at your home state and get that juice flowing. It's a great thing, and I'm glad that Duke was able to have that experience at home. There's no better feeling than that. And I think that you know he took it, he ran with, he ran with it. And, you know, it was really good to see. Um, I'm excited excited for Duke. And, you know, you, you're going to see it moving forward from him. He's going to give him everything he got. And, you know, that's all you can ask for for, for any of us, especially, you know, Duke coming, coming in kind of like I did, where we just came out of nowhere and had to learn the system. And, you know, it, it was good to see. Great. Thank you. Last question here, Travis. <laughs> Hey, Philip, uh, kind of the converse of, of Omar's question there. The Saints, you know, they're pretty loaded at all three levels in the middle of their defense with Anya Mata and Demario Davis and Malcolm Jenkins, and the names go on and on. What kind of challenges do those guys present you on the interior uh, in the running game? Yeah, Saints is, Saints are a physical team. They're physical, they're sound, um, they're, they're, they're aggressive, and they've been together for a very long time. You know, the Saints have been through a lot of a lot of ups and downs. They've seen it all. You know, they they have went through heartbroken times. So as a team, collectively, they they share that bond, which is very special, and it's it's, it's hard to break. And that's why that defense is what they are today. Um, for us, we're gonna go have to go out there, and we're just gonna have to play football. We're gonna have to. It's gonna be a hard hitting game. Monday night, everybody's gonna be watching, and at the end of the day, you're gonna have to bring your helmet and bring your pads, and it's it's gonna be like one of those games where you know last man is going to be standing at the end of it and you know and for me you know I was unfortunate like to play the Saints when we had no quarterbacks back in Denver uh so it was it was very hard because you know they're just, they're just an aggressive group and and they're a close-knit type group group that you know go as one 